Hey YouTube, I'm Mars1952 and today I'm going to work on a, an electrical outlet that is installed incorrectly. Uh, I can't exactly say I'm fixing it, I'm just trying to improve it. So, this is uh, sort of one of my pet peeves here. This outlet is installed upside down. Works just fine that way, except unless you want to use one of these new devices that you can get that have uh, like a right angle plug. It's supposed to go in that way, your cords go neatly down at the bottom. It'll only fit this way, so you can see that's not very good. And another one, a night light. This is an LED night light with the outlet adapter. It should fit like that, but you have to put it in that way. That's not going to work. And I have another thing here, just an outlet strip. This is a uh, surge suppressed outlet slip, uh, outlet strip, and it should plug in like that. It's got a nice, neat 90 degree cord, but. If I was going to use it here, it would have to look like that, which is sort of stupid. So I'm going to fix it. And the first thing we have to do is uh, turn off the power. Now if you have a helper, you can cell phone each other and flip switches until you get the right one. And then you can test it with a, uh, a meter, like this one. This is an inexpensive meter. Or a even more inexpensive, this is just a neon little light. You can do any kind of voltage testing with that. But I've got this gizmo. It's sort of neat. It's a little radio device. This transmits a signal through the wires. You plug it in. You can see it's turned on. And this receives it. See, so it turned it on and it starts chirping. Turn, turn the sensitivity down. Okay, so now what I have to do is go down to the basement and flip. I'll find the right circuit breaker. Okay, I'm down at the circuit breaker panel. And... I've got the receiver turned on, and it will send a radio signal, the device will send a radio signal through the circuit breaker panel. And I've adjusted the sensitivity. You can see there's, this usually works better than this, but at the very least you can guess which it is, and I'm pretty sure it's this, this switch right here, so I'm going to switch that one. And as soon as you do that, then, yeah, that's the right one. I'm going to turn it up to full blast. Well, maybe that's not the right one. Okay, that's not the right one, so let's try the next one. Still transmitting. There it is, finally. <laughs> I was way off. Okay, so that's the one. Stop transmitting, so I've got the power off. Let's go back upstairs. Well, I'm back. Turn that sucker on. See, I'm not getting a signal anymore. Uh, but we're going to check it. Double and quadruple check it. Don't like getting shocked. Okay, so. Let's see if we can get a test on here. We don't appear to have anything. Okay. Um, I always like to do one more test and find it. We have this outlet tester. It's for, you can check to see if you have power. So there's nothing there. But it, you can also check the ground fault interrupt circuits and whether or not your polarity and grounds are correct. Alright, it's ready to go. So the first thing we do is to take it apart. Now you don't need to use a fancy screwdriver like this one. These are great for electrical work. Anywhere you don't need much torque. They have good control and they're fast. Fun to use. And I'm going to use, you can do this just with your hands, obviously, but I've got this little tool that I like to use. I don't remember where I got it, but it makes it easier to handle the outlets. You just shove it in there, you get a good grip on it. It also has indicator lights that if you've missed something, uh, it'll indicate it. Now this doesn't, there's a little bit too much torque there, no, it's okay. Once you get it started, you can usually do it with this screwdriver. 
going to have to pause this in a minute. wires in here. Now, this is another one of my pet peeves. I'm pretty, I was sure this was going to happen because I've, I've changed other outlets in this house. You see the wires are just stuck into the back, which is an acceptable practice I guess sometimes. Now this plug, they seem to be pretty secure, so it probably has some clamping. Uh, probably clamps down but I've seen them before where they stick in the back and there's nothing but a little one little tab of metal holding the the wire and it just contacts in one place I'm gonna go ahead and take this out the rest of the way and see what's going on in there but it is good we've got the ground is connected to the ground you know it's got a plastic box so uh, if you have a metal box a lot of times people will not ground it because it's grounded to the box but a lot of times the box isn't grounded, so I always ground them. And now this is sort of hard to tell here. Now that's loose. Get the right screwdriver. So that should be tight there. It's not. This one's tight. Let me see if that will pull out. Now that's, that's held in by a spring. So there's no clamping going on there. So I'm going to take it completely apart and put in this outlet uh, that I salvaged from another job. It's a high quality outlet. So I'll fast forward through this. You don't need to see all this stuff. That's not coming out. So I'll have to snip it. So, yep. Let me get a snip. This one will work. You don't want to snip hot wires. I should put a fixed focus on this here. So since I'm not going to reuse this outlet, I'm just going to snip all these off. Okay, so I've got a screwdriver. And this one, particular one, has a tool, you could, a place where you can shove the screwdriver down in there and release this tension on the spring on this one. Then you can get the stub of wire out of there. On there. So I'm going to go ahead, this looks like a pretty decent outlet. I'm going to go ahead and pull the wires out of the back, put it back together correctly with the wires clamped on the side. Uh, I suppose there's nothing against code um, to stick those in the back. It's certainly fast and easy but I don't like it. I've had it in the past. I've had a number of times where the uh, the outlet connections went bad. So we've got to strip these wires. Once again, you can strip these any old way. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the power off, you're good to go. All right, wires are stripped. Then you use a pair of pliers to all right, look at the outlet. The screw is going to turn that way and it's going to draw the, draw the wire the direction you turn it. So you want to make your, your um, hooks in the wire so they'll go over the screw. Well, I've got to take this old stuff one off here first, I guess. do a couple of these and fast forward. Okay, so there's the ground. Alright, so let's, um, 
Now, when you put these together, you notice that a couple of the screws are they're not exactly white, but they're they're um, cadmium colored. They're light, and the other screws are brass. So the brass goes to black, and the white ones go to white. White or uh, the black is your hot wire. All right, so we need to have them. This is going to go in this way correct way up so it looks like a smiley face, eyes and mouth. And let's put the white on the white. So the wire is going to turn that away. So we're going to curl it this way. So we got a little curl. Loosen up the screw. it on, tighten it down. I get them nice and snug, but you don't, you don't over tighten them, don't strip them out. All right, so I'll do that for the rest of these and come back. Okay, so I've got them all fastened on here. Just make sure they're snug. Um, I want to show you on like on this outlet here. This is one I salvaged. This has the type of um, I don't have anything to show you. Oh, here, hold on. Here's a piece of wire we can demonstrate with. This has a, the type that you can stick in the back as well. But these, this type, uh, actually clamps down with the screw on that wire in the back. So you can see it's loose, loose now, clamp it down, and that's a good secure connection. If you have this type of wire and it's sticking out the back, that's not necessarily bad, that's okay. But uh, this one, this type, and uh, there's another cheap one laying around here, they just have a little spring, a little spring in there that holds the wire in place. I don't like that, that's not good enough. All right, so now let's put it back. There's two things I'm going to do here. I'm going to take these regular screws out of here. These just have a straight slot screwdriver. And I'm going to replace them with these. I have a bucket of these that I got for practically nothing. These are Phillips head. They're a lot easier to drive. The straight ones will work, and uh, you probably aren't going to change yours out, but I have replacements. And as long as I have it, I'm going to use this. This helps maneuver that outlet into place. Um, all right, now, let's see if we can get in here a little bit more. These wires all have to go back in that box. If you just jam them back in there, it's not going to fold up very neatly. So you can see we already have a fold going down here. So we want to have another fold up on the top and a fold down there so that these will sort of go in there in a Z shape. You push it back in place, just like that. And let me get the right screwdriver. There's a number two Phillips. You can use any any old screwdriver will work. So you can get this in here. <clears throat> but Phillips aren't perfect. Phillips screws aren't perfect, but they're a lot easier to drive than a flat screwdriver. Get the other one. Where'd it go? Typically, I spend half the day looking for parts. Now, this one, this outlet is pretty tight. Whoever installed the drywall cut it close, so you have a, a pretty good fit. Just draw it down until it touches that drywall, not too firm. Okay, you can pull that out. It's a little bit crooked, so let me put that back in there. So you can, using this one, or just your hands, you can twist it a little bit so that it's laying there flat. Then you can put your outlet cover back on. Now these plastic outlet covers are not very strong. This one has a crack in it already. So you can't expect to draw that outlet out with the cover. You put the cover back on, 
and you just bring this down till it's just snug. Now, I don't have one right here handy, but this has got a crack in it, so I'll go down to the shop and dig one up. Um, but we're done, except for turning the power back on. So, I'm going to turn the power back on and I'll check it with this. And I'll be right back. <clears throat> well, I'm back, and hopefully you can see that uh, all three lights, or actually the two ambers are illuminated and the red is not that indicates that both of the, um, the polarity is correct and the ground is correct. If the ground is incorrect, it would illuminate red. But, and there's uh, indicators on here to show you what's what. But two ambers is good. So it's, it's done, ready to go. So now I can plug these in like they're supposed to be. Have fun. Try not to kill yourself. <laughs>